Hi kids, we're back today. We're going to continue our talk about momentum and uh, today specifically about how momentum is a quantity, a physical quantity that's conserved sometimes, a lot of times actually, during a collision. We're going to start out pretty simple here. Uh, we're going to keep it in one dimension to start. We'll move on to two dimensions later. And basically what we've got going on here is you got this yellow object with a mass M1 and it's moving with a velocity B1. And over here we have an object with a mass M2 and it's moving in the opposite direction with a velocity V2 and they collide. There's a collision. And then after the collision, after the collision, the objects move in a different direction. So we now have the same yellow object moving in the opposite direction to completely change direction. And we now say that its velocity is V1 with this little dash here. And the way that's pronounced is prime, P-R-I-M-E, prime. So this would be V1 prime. And the other object, the red object here, it moves in the opposite direction. Now it changed direction. Its mass hasn't changed. The mass doesn't change. But now it has a velocity V2 prime right here, V2 prime. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat what I just showed you, but by using this animation. So here is this red object, object number one. All right, and it's at position one meter. It's moving with a velocity of positive five meters per second. And its mass is two kilograms. So if you were to multiply those two numbers together, we get a momentum P, see, 10 kilogram meters per second. And we could even calculate its kinetic energy. On the other side, we have this object, object two, all right, and it starts at a position of 11 meters. It's going to move with a velocity of negative five meters per second. Its mass is two kilograms, so two times negative five gives us a momentum of negative 10 meters per second, all right? And we could also calculate the kinetic energy. Notice kinetic energy is a scalar. There's no positive or negative here. And what we have right here is what we call the total momentum. So if you were to add 10 and negative 10, this is what you get. You get zero. So we're going to move, uh, excuse me, we're going to let this simulation move forward. We're going to actually watch them move towards each other. Now I paused it right there to show you that the positions have changed, the velocities have not changed, the momentums have not changed, the kinetic energy has not changed, and the total momentum has not changed. Now we're going to let them hit each other. So they hit each other and then they rebound it back the other way. So now uh, object one is moving at negative five meters per second. Object two is moving at positive five meters per section per second. Object one now has a momentum of five uh, times the two kilograms, negative five times the two kilograms, so negative 10 kilogram meters per second. Remember, momentum is a vector. And object two has a momentum of the five meters per second times the two kilograms, which gives me 10 kilogram meters per second. It's positive. And kinetic energies have not changed. And look. After the collision, the total momentum is still, still zero. It's constant, or what a scientist, a physicist would say, that the momentum is conserved. That's what they would say. And you run into this with the law of conservation of energy and physics class and chemistry class, law of conservation of uh, mass. Conservation means the quantity is conserved, it doesn't change. So the momentum before the collision and the momentum after the collision are the same. It's constant, it's conserved, the law of conservation of momentum. 
Now, the uh, simulation that I just showed you is a gizmo. It's available to you if you want to play around with it and just move the sliders around, uh, do whatever you like. I'm not going to formally assign it because it's a different situation here. I've got to watch how much work I give you. But, you know, I am expecting you kids to do work, okay? I'm expecting you to log in regularly and keep up, but I'm not going to be assigning... Uh, gizmos. Uh, we'll just deal with the core. So let's talk about what happens during the collision. During the collision we have that the force of object one on object two. So object one hits object two. So the force of object one on object two. And then we have the force of object two on object one. Well, we know Newton's third law, NTL, Newton's third law. We know that these two quantities here have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. We know that to be true. So the next assumption we're going to make is let's say, let's assume that the amount of time, delta T, is the contact time. That's how much time object one and object two are in contact with each other during the collision. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply each side of the Newton's third law equation. I'm going to multiply each side by delta t. If I multiply both sides of an equation by the same amount, the equation still holds. I've done the same thing to both sides. Next. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that these forces, force of object one on object two and force of object two on object one, are the net force for each object. We're going to assume there are no other forces around. There's no friction around. There's no air resistance around. There's no gravitational forces around. Nothing else is around. Just those forces. So because of that, F12 is the net force on object two and F21 is the net force on object one. Now, the next thing you have to remember is that this quantity right here, F net times delta T for object two and F net times delta T for object one. Yesterday, we learned that this quantity right here was defined as the impulse. This product of the net force I just proved to you or told you it's net force, times the time or multiplied by the time that the uh, force is acting on the object is impulse. We learned that uh, yesterday. And we learned that impulse equals change in momentum. That's from yesterday's work. So then I can say, look, I'm going to replace this F12 times delta T. I'm going to replace that with the change in momentum for object 2. And I'm going to replace this with the change in momentum for object 1. So we write it down. And we have to keep the equal sign, the equal sign remains, and we have to keep the negative sign. The negative sign remains. So we continue, and we're still working on what we learned from yesterday, that change in momentum 2 is going to equal the mass of the second object times its change in velocity. We are going to assume, and rightly so, that the mass of object 2 does not change. Equals, negative sign stays, change in momentum of object one is equal to the mass of object one times the change in velocity of object one. Working on what we learned yesterday that momentum is this quantity defined as the mass times the velocity. Let's continue. So now we have written in here what delta V2 means. It means V2 prime minus V2. We're not going to use V2 final minus V2 initial anymore. V2 final is replaced with V2 prime. 
and v2 initial is just replaced with v2, but it's the same thing. It's just a different notation. Similarly here, delta v1 is equal to v1 prime minus v1. Now we're going to do some distributive multiplication. So we bring the m2 in to the bracket. m2 times v2 prime minus m2 times v2 is equal to, once again, distributive multiplication here, negative m1 v1 prime. And we've got a negative times a negative here, negative times a negative. So it's going to give me a positive here, positive m1 v1. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring all the quantities with prime velocities, velocities after the collision, onto the left-hand side. So this term right here, negative m1 v1 prime, comes over to the other side. Here it is. Now it's become positive. And on the right-hand side, we're going to put all the terms with velocities without a prime, velocities before the collision. We're going to put them all on the left-hand side. Excuse me, the right-hand side. So look negative m2 v2 comes over to the other side so this becomes now positive m2 v2 and we have this line right here just by switching things around well what does m2 v2 prime mean well it's that quantity we learned about yesterday yesterday it's the momentum of object 2 the momentum p of object 2 after the collision p2 prime What's this? M1 times V1 prime, mass of the object multiplied by the velocity of that object 1 after the collision prime. Well, we know that mass times velocity is momentum. So this becomes P1 prime, the momentum of object 1 after the collision prime. So we have the equal sign. And then with similar logic, M1 times V1 is equal to P1 the momentum of object 1 before the collision. And then we have m2 v2. That equals p2, the momentum of object 2 before the collision. Well, there are only two objects involved here. So if we add up the momentum of object 1 after the collision to the momentum of object 2 after the collision, what we have is the total momentum pt, the total momentum after the collision because we've added together the momentum of each object after the collision, and that's on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have the momentum of the first object plus the momentum of the second object, both of them before the collision. So we're going to call that PT, momentum total before the collision. Well, what have we found here? We have found that momentum total after the collision is equal to momentum total before the collision. The quantity known as total momentum has been conserved. So this is the law of conservation momentum. Total momentum does not change. OK, and then to recap, we have conserved uh, momentum. Momentum total after the collision is equal to momentum total before the collision. Now, most textbooks don't write it like that. They just write P prime is equal to P. Momentum after the collision is equal to momentum before the collision. That's usually the way they write it. If I bring this over to the other side, it becomes negative. And then we have P prime minus P, or momentum after the collision, subtract momentum before the collision, equals 0, or change in momentum is equal to 0. Now, what's really interesting about the law of conservation of momentum is look how we have proved its existence mathematically simply from two things. By starting with Newton's third law, that's where we started with this, all right? Then, introducing how much time they were in contact with each other, recognizing that this product was impulse, and away we went, and we proved mathematically that momentum is conserved, law of conservation of momentum. And that is what we saw right in here, just in the animation. But this value never changed. So we saw it happen in the simulation, and then we proved it mathematically. All right, well, let's try an example. We have a 1.0 times 10 to the 4 kilogram, kilogram truck 
and it's traveling at positive 24.0 meters per second x hat and it strikes a 5.0 times 10 to the 3 kilogram car and that car is at rest and the vehicles lock together what is the common velocity afterwards So we're going to use the gizmo again just to kind of help us visualize what the question is about. Here's mass one. That's going to be the truck. So I've made it three kilograms. Okay. Here's uh, the second object, the car. It's lighter. So, you know, let's try one kilogram, right? We're not trying to replicate the problem exactly. Just try to give us some guidance about it. And the truck is moving at five meters per second positive and the car look it's stationary it's not moving look its velocity is zero so we know what their initial positions are right there the truck is at one meter x hat the car stationary at six meters x hat there's their velocity the trucks moving at positive five meters per second there is the car it's not moving so when you multiply zero meters per second for the car times its mass of one kilogram, we get that its momentum is zero. It's not moving. It can't have any momentum. It doesn't have any velocity. Then over here with the truck, the truck's moving at five meters per second. Its mass is three kilograms, this red object here that we're pretending is the truck. So we multiply the three times the five and we get a momentum of 15 kilogram meters per second. And the total momentum is 15 kilogram meters per second positive. So we're going to let the animation run through. So what did we see happening? We saw that the two objects, one and two, one being the truck, two being the car, have stuck together. They stuck together and they're moving forward as one object. All right. And we can calculate the momentum of the truck, its velocity times its mass. We get 11.25. We can calculate the momentum of the car which is represented by number two blue object its velocity see how they're stuck together they're moving at the same velocity so its velocity times its mass there's its momentum but look momentum was conserved it was 15 kilogram meters per second before the collision and it's 15 kilogram meters per second after the collision momentum has been conserved so let's get back to our question right the truck and the car, we did that little simulation to help us visualize. So it says the vehicles lock together, just like the simulation we used, right? What is the common velocity afterwards? Well, we just learned about the law of conservation of momentum. Let's use it. Momentum before the collision, P, is equal to momentum after the collision, P prime. What is involved in the momentum before the collision? Well, the momentum of the truck before the collision, plus the momentum of the car before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. Well, what is involved in the momentum after the collision? It's the momentum of this now joined, smashed up together truck car, so I'm going to call it momentum TC prime because it's after the collision. So they're together moving as we saw in the animation. Well, let's expand these terms. Momentum of the truck before the collision is equal to the mass of the truck times its velocity before the collision. So I have the momentum of the truck expanded. Momentum of the car before the collision is momentum, excuse me, mass of the car times the velocity of the car before the collision. So I've expanded that. Equals, let me do a better equal sign there. Equals, that's better. The mass of this new truck car smashed up together combo times the velocity of the truck car combo after the collision velocity truck car prime so we do a little rearranging here because we want to isolate for the velocity of this this new combined vehicle after the collision we want to find velocity truck car prime velocity of the truck car smashed together moving together prime after the collision so we divide each side by the new mass truck car the one thing we have to remember is that the uh, velocity of the car before the collision was zero. So this entire term disappears. So we're only left with these other terms, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. We substitute, we do our division, and we get the velocity of the truck car combo prime, right, after the collision is equal to positive 16 meters per second x hat. 
All right, well, let's try another uh, example. This is kind of a fun example. Let's say we've got a unicorn. There's the unicorn. Look at my artistic ability there. Incredible. And we say that the mass of the unicorn is 100 kilograms. And let's say the unicorn is walking, or about to walk anyways, on a flatbed truck trailer. There it is. Okay. And the mass of the flatbed truck trailer's for trailer is 400 kilograms. I don't know if these numbers are for masses or accurate. It doesn't matter. All right. And let's say that the unicorn at the beginning is just standing there. So the velocity of the unicorn before anything happens is zero. And the flatbed truck is also not moving. So the velocity of the flatbed truck is zero. So they're just sitting there. No one's doing anything. Then the unicorn, I had originally called it a horse. I don't know why. But anyways, the unicorn starts to walk. So the unicorn starts to walk this way. So now the velocity of the unicorn after the walk or after the collision, if you will, because the unicorn walking on the flat bed truck trailer would be nothing more than nothing less than each little step being a collision with the surface. So think of it as a bunch of little collisions that we're going to idealize all together as one. So velocity of the unicorn as the unicorn starts to walk is positive five meters per second x hat because we had x hat positive right here. See that? See that direction to the right positive. We want to find out as the unicorn is walking at positive five meters per second x hat, what would be the velocity of the flatbed truck as the unicorn is walking or velocity f prime? So we use the law of conservation of momentum. Momentum while walking prime is equal to momentum uh, when there was no walk, all right? But we know when there is no motion, this momentum before the walking occurred, that's zero. That is zero right there, okay? So, because there was no motion before the unicorn started to walk. And then momentum as the unicorn starts to walk involves the momentum of the unicorn as it's walking plus the momentum of the flatbed truck as the unicorn is walking, prime, prime, all right? So we bring the momentum of the unicorn prime over to the other side and it becomes negative. There it is, it becomes negative. We're going to expand this into what momentum means. Momentum of the flatbed truck as the unicorn is walking is the mass of the fat flatbed truck times the velocity of the flatbed truck as the, as the unicorn is walking velocity flatbed truck prime and that's going to equal the still have the negative sign the mass of the unicorn times the velocity of the unicorn as it's walking or prime all right let's go back up here i think i drew an arrow yes i did and i rearranged that to isolate for velocity f prime the velocity of the flatbed truck as the unicorn is walking prime and this is what i have here when I rearranged it, I substitute, and I have that the velocity of the flatbed truck after the collision is negative 1.25 meters per second x hat. And I think in your gut, you would realize that as the uh, unicorn is moving forward, the uh, flatbed truck would move in the opposite direction. If you ever stepped onto a skateboard by accident, you kind of lunge forward, the skateboard goes back. If you ever mistakenly tried to walk onto a boat or a canoe or something, and you push to move forward on the canoe, it goes in the opposite direction because momentum has to be conserved. Conserved. Okay, kids, there you go. A uh, couple of examples for you. The law of conservation momentum, kind of cool. And uh, I gave you some homework, so make sure you check the website. Wash your hands, stay safe, stay home, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.